Okay, now let's talk about how to calculate the body temperature of an ectotherm using the iterative method. The problem is that ectotherms don't have a constant body temperature, right? It can fluctuate depending on the environment, depending on various um, it, situations. It's the balance of various heat inputs and outputs that will determine the body temperature. So um, if we start off with some definitions, so TA is the ambient temperature, or ambient meaning like the environment, what is the temperature outside, for example. Um, and then TB is defined as body temperature. And it's variable, right? The thing is, TB is not constant. Here's the thing. So the heat of metabolism, we know, depends on body temperature. But in ectotherms, body temperature is not constant. And in fact, metabolism can raise body temperature just a little bit. But, and when that happens, you're going to also then raise the metabolism just a little bit. See? Okay, now if we assume that um, the most of the, the major source of heat loss is the heat of conduction, okay? So the question is, do these things equilibrate? Do they balance? And when it does, can we figure out what is the body temperature? So in order to figure that out, we can use what's called the iterative method. Okay, so we start off with the metabolic rate and we know that it, the animal lives in an environment with an ambient temperature, TA. So the questions are, what is this animal's body temperature? And what is the heat of metabolism at that body temperature? So we start off with the simple assumption that TB equals TA to start. Okay, and then we can assume that HM and HC balance. So that basically this is saying that um, all metabolic heat is dumped through conduction. If it balances. Okay, you might wonder, what is HC? Well, if we look at our handout here, um, we have the heat of conduction is given by this equation. Okay, so for our purposes, we're mainly going to be focusing on this constant C, um, which is going to be obtained through the use of a scaling equation given in Withers. And so HC is going to be determined by this constant C times the delta T, which is the difference between the body temperature and the ambient temperature. Okay, so we have, um, okay, so we have, and we have HC equals C delta T. Here's an example of the iterative method. So let's start off with a 50 kilogram tortoise who lives at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So 50 kilograms converted to grams is 50,000 grams, right? Because there's 1,000 grams per kilogram. And you just would cancel this out. So it's 50 times 1,000. So we first start off by calculating this animal's SMR or the heat of metabolism at 20 degrees Celsius. So using a scaling equation from Withers uh, for tortoises, 1.3 mass in grams to the 0.86 power gives us the SMR in joules per hour. So for 50,000 grams, that turns out to be 14,290 joules per hour or 14.29 kilojoules per hour. 
So that's the um, metabolic rate at the body temperature of 20. Okay, but our animal lives at 25. So to convert to the metabolic rate at 25, we use the Q10. Okay, because anytime you want to convert a rate from one temperature to another, you can use the Q10. So applying our SMR at 20 to R1, um, T1 is 20 and T2 is 25, and using a value of Q10 of 2.5, we get uh, metabolic rate at 25 is 14.29 times 2.5 raised to the 0.5 power because that's 25 minus 20 over 10. And that gives us a metabolic rate at 25 of 22.59 kilojoules per hour. So by going up 5 degrees Celsius, we have really increased the metabolic rate from 14.29 to 22.59. That's about a 1.6 factor increase. So this small difference in temperature, fairly small, relatively small, it gives us a huge boost in metabolism. So that's another reason why we want to account for these things when we're looking at the meta metabolism of ectotherms. Okay, now let's move on to calculating. So, so this is the um, heat gain by metabolism. So let's calculate the heat loss from conduction. Okay, and then we'll see set them equal to see where it equilibrates. Okay, so what is C? Okay, so we're going to use a scaling equation from Withers for ectotherms. 2603 mass to the 0.148 power in joules per hour gives us the constant C in joules per hour for mass in grams. Okay, so that turns out to be 12.9 kilojoules per hour per degree Celsius. So now we just have to set HM, the heat of metabolism, equal to the heat of conduction and solve for delta T. Okay, so recall that HC can be expressed as C delta T. Okay, so if we set HM and HC equal, then we can solve for the delta T here. Okay, so um, dividing both sides by C, we can solve for delta T, and uh, this, the heat of metabolism comes from up above here. Okay, and then we can use this C here to put in the denominator and we get a result of 1.75 degrees Celsius. Okay, and so that means that because um, delta T is body temperature minus ambient or body temperature is ambient plus delta T, it gives us uh, a body temperature of 25 plus 1.75 is 26.75. So it's actually raised the body temperature by almost 2 degrees, 1.75 Celsius. And that, um, that concludes iteration number 1. But what does this mean? Now our body temperature is not 25, it's 26.75. So then we have to recalculate metabolism because temperature is higher. And to do that we use the Q10 again, <laughs> okay? So plugging this in. So now I'm gonna use, um, note here that I'm using 26.75 for the T2 or TB. And I'm gonna just keep this 20 degrees Celsius for SMR and keep using this SMR um, HM of 20. As long, remember, as long as this and this match, it's fine. You can use whatever reference temperature you want. Um, I like to do that just to keep it straight in my head what's going on. Okay, 
So recalculating metabolism at 26.75 based on a reference temperature of um, 20, we get, plugging that in again, we get now the heat of metabolism is now 26.52 kilojoules per hour. Okay, so it's a bit higher than what it was before, which was 22.59. File that away. Okay, so let's recalculate body temperature now. So again, um, sticking it into the equation where we have metabolism and conduction balanced, we can get um, delta T is now, uh, by putting this in here, and so the C just stays constant. We just keep reusing it because it's a constant. Um, it's a constant. So now our delta T is 2.056 degrees Celsius. So then um, body temperature is 2.056 above ambient, which is now 27.056. Okay, and that concludes iteration two. Okay, so Um, so now you see that it increased, but not as much. So if we write it out in a table, we can see that um, at 20, we have, a uh, oh, this is our SMR. Okay, so starting from ambient of 25, we have a metabolic rate of 22.59. Um, which then raised body temperature to 26.75. Okay, so if we recalculate it from 26.75, our new heat of metabolism is 26.52. Okay, now we're calculating body temperature from that, we have 27.06. So you can keep going. So you just, um, you would then calculate with the new heat of metabolism here and you want to keep keep iterating until the body temperature stabilizes. And for our purposes, we're going to say less than 0 0.1 degrees Celsius change from one iteration to the next. And when we reach this point, we're, we'll say that this is in, in heat balance. Okay, so I mean, our calculations are pretty rough. So I think if we can get it within that, then any changes is, is given all the assumptions, you know, this is a fairly small change um, that could probably, they could easily balance there. Um, yeah, so don't worry about it getting perfectly to zero, but we'll consider biological significance at about less than a change of 0.1 degrees Celsius per hour. Okay. Okay, and that is the iterative method. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll just keep repeating these iterations um, until you get no change that is, until the change is 0.1 degrees Celsius per hour or less.